Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and Eid Mubarak to all. In this video, as I promised you, we will start addressing Dan Gibson's strongest argument, which is the Qibla argument. And today, we will be talking about Dan Gibson research methodology. Any historians who make a research and reach a conclusion should tell us what was the methodology he used. For example, I want to know why did Dan Gibson choose only 12 mosques in his research? If we go to the earliest mosques that were built, where we can identify their direction of prayer, we can plot them on a map and see if their lines converge. We'll find one of three things. They all point in different directions. They all point to Jerusalem, or they all point to another location. After the Mosque of the Two Kiblas in Saudi Arabia, there are a further 11 early surviving mosques that we can research. Does that mean these are the only first century mosques that were built by Muslims? We have so many first century mosques. And you can see the list from Dan Gibson's website. This is the list in his website. You can see there are several mosques built in the 7th century. However, they are excluded from Dan Gibson's list of the early mosques. So what was the methodology here for excluding these mosques and including the 12 mosques? Is it a fair and unbiased one? Or does it just serve the agenda of the researcher? Let's let Dan Gibson explain his methodology of choosing mosques. This is the mihrab of an old mosque. The early Arabs set the Qibla direction using the stars, and they were very accurate. The best way to determine the Qibla direction is to visit the mosque and use an actual accurate GPS unit. Not every mosque can be used for this study. Many of them were totally reconstructed over time, so much so that it is no longer possible to determine their original Qibla direction. However, a number of mosques survive. So the criteria used here is that the mosques have not been rebuilt over time. Those mosques that have been rebuilt are excluded. So, according to this criteria, it seems that we would have to exclude 99% of the 7th century mosques because most of them were rebuilt over time. We are only left with the 12 mosques that Dan Gibson selected. It all makes sense until we ask the question, did Dan Gibson abide by the criteria he set? Did Dan Gibson only selected the mosques that haven't been rebuilt over time? The answer is no. And that wouldn't surprise you if you watched the previous videos in this series and seen the level of deception that Dan Gibson went to. Let me now prove to you what I'm saying. Let's go through some of these mosques. Al-Aqsa Mosque and it has been rebuilt several times. Guangzhou Mosque in China, it has been rebuilt several times. Sana'a Mosque in Yemen, it has been rebuilt several times. Al Qiblatayn Mosques in Medina, Saudi Arabia, and it has been rebuilt several times. And of course, Al Fustat in Egypt, it has been rebuilt several times. So. The first thing that we need to clarify is that Dan Gibson didn't follow his own criteria, which shows his desperation to prove his mad hypothesis. What about the other mosques that he included in his documentary? There's no problem about them and they're all facing Petra as he claimed, and there are no deceptions and lies in the information he provided about these mosques, right? Don't get excited. Dan Gibson's fans, there are still more videos to come, inshallah, which will dismantle this hypothesis once and for all. Before ending, I would like to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you find the content useful. And if you want to be notified about future videos, inshallah, 
click the notification button. That's all for our video today and see you soon inshallah with another video. Thank you so much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.